Have you ever heard about the Paris syndrome? If not, don't worry, in this video I'm going to tell you what it is. A lot of people will tell you that Paris is overrated and expensive, but then I was surprised on my trip about a couple of things. So let's see how Paris is doing. Oh guys, I just arrived at the airport. There are already so many people lining up. It's going to be like a two hour flight. Ryanair is known for having like a limitation for your luggage weight. I hope that's not going to be an issue. I tried my best. So I made it through security check-in and at the check-in counter they told me that if I cannot find my online boarding pass I have to pay 20 euro to get my boarding pass. Luckily my suitcase was under 20 kilo which I was treading. I think my flight's boarding, <laughs> they just announced it. Ryanair is a well-known budget airline, however they only allow you a certain amount of luggage. Hi, my name is Tina and in the last six months I have been to about 15 countries. I quit my job in Tokyo to build my own business and to travel around the world either for one year or as long as my money lasts. That was a short flight, but it's raining outside. Paris is a famous travel destination, but people would also tell you that it's overrated and expensive. There is also a term for a psychological condition among some tourists who experience extreme disappointment when the city doesn't meet their romanticized expectations, which is called the Paris syndrome. I just landed in, not really in Paris, I'm here by mistake. My plan was to go to Paris from Sevilla and I booked a flight to the airport um, Beauvais, Paris. So now I'm in Beauvais. I stopped in Beauvais in order to save money on accommodation. But there are also a lot of ways how you can save money when you're going to Paris. In the course of this video, I will give you some tips. Oh la la. <laughs> so I'm finally here. Uh, when I looked up flights, it was showing me a flight to Paris, basically, and Paris is not too far away. Today is already my last day in Beauvais. I'm just going to the city center. On my way to the train station to Paris. Wish me luck that I get this train. <laughs> Yesterday I got an email from the app I booked it on that there are strikes starting today. It's, it's not cancelled yet. <laughs> I'd say if it's like summer and the temperatures are better, Beauvais is actually a really nice place. It is very easy to get a train from Beauvais to Paris. I booked my train ticket on Omeo and it cost me only 6 euro. However, I booked it way in advance. On the same day, ticket prices were about 15 euro. In Europe, they are often striking and trains also might be cancelled very last minute. train just arrived and I'm going to take the metro. It's windy and cold but it's not raining. In Paris the easiest and cheapest way to get around is either by metro or by bus. Because I stayed only for two days I decided to get some individual tickets. Each individual ticket costs 2 euro 15 so I paid 4 euro 30 each day. The train suddenly stopped here at the station because there was a personal accident, we know that from Tokyo. My hotel is pretty close, like from here, so I'm going to walk. <laughs> I found my hotel, it's by the way a really good one this time. And then on top of that in Paris, so I was really excited to get here. In Paris, I stayed at a four-star hotel called Mop House. I agreed on a social media collaboration with them and got a little discount for the room and a complimentary and breakfast. You enter. And this is how it looks like. Okay. 
I'm in Paris now. Just checked into my room. Yesterday I got an email that they are going to strike today and tomorrow. But my train was not cancelled. I learned two things today. Paris has city tax. And people from Paris, people from France or people from Europe even will be like, yeah, sure, duh. I shouldn't be surprised about it really, but they should have told me. And then I learned that very good hotels like this one here take a deposit. If you don't know about this kind of stuff, it's in, in the, the first moment. It's like, so, hi, that's me. Okay, so now we got light here. But crazy. This is supposed to be the bathroom. So here's the toilet. Quite a fancy bathroom. Well, it's just a sink, it's not really the bathroom. I guess. Or a shower. Okay. Look at this nice light. So nice. And my bedroom. I am probably not sleeping very much. <laughs> hey guys, it's been a long, long time since I got a little something for myself. This little package is from a company called Esamole and they are shipping worldwide. That's perfect for me as someone who's traveling and who's constantly in a different location. Esamole is a jewelry company that specializes in wedding and engagement rings, but obviously you can also get something for yourself if you're not getting married or engaged like me. And I'm all about manifestations, so maybe. I love doing these unboxing videos. Okay, so here goes nothing. Quite a simple package, but a very nice purple color. Another thing that you should know about Esamoli is that they also customize your jewelry, if you'd like. You can go on their homepage and you can get a free quote for the piece of jewelry that you want them to make. This is how the packaging looks like. Got a little nail file. We got a little cute bag where we can put in our ring. Tina got herself an engagement ring slash wedding ring. <gasps> oh God. <laughs> Such a cute, fancy, fancy ring. Oh, this is exciting. Thank you so much, Esamole, for sending me a, one of your jewelry pieces. It's gorgeous. I'm still not married. I'm in Paris in the city of love, so why not get a little present for myself and show love to myself? Which is really amazing about Esamole is that their jewelry pieces are handmade. Um, you can get your own piece of jewelry custom made. It will take them a little bit longer to ship it if you get it custom made because of the production time. Yeah. Even if you're traveling a lot, something like jewelry will always fit into your bag and into your suitcase. If you want to check out all of their jewelry pieces, you can use the link in the description box below. I will link their website. I will also give you a link to this ring. If you're making your first order on Esamole, don't forget to use my discount code TINA to get 10% off your first order on their site. And yeah, it's not only a nice present for yourself, but maybe also you know someone you want to make a nice surprise for. You can get jewelry for yourself or for anyone else really as a nice little present any time of the year. As breakfast at my hotel was complimentary, I obviously had to try it. When you come to Paris, you have to try their croissants, pain chocolat, baguette or their macarons and their crepes. So I got breakfast at this hotel. The food looks really good. They have a large variety of different baked goods, cheese, meat, all kinds of stuff, fruits. Excited about this. Jesus. Damn, they're good. They're so good. The cookies in New York were extremely good, but in a different way. This one's a bit crunchy outside, a little bit softer inside, but also not doughy. 
Like I said, it was a very good breakfast. I'm still in love with those cookies. Number two, right after New York, that was definitely one of the best ones I ever had. I have to take the metro and yeah, let's do some sightseeing. I have been to Paris once as a child, but only to Disneyland. I cannot remember anything else. So I actually want to see all of those important places. Like, I was just wondering if I should try McDonald's while I'm here because I, I heard, I think it was an Emily in Paris that they have a better McDonald's in Paris actually, so. I was in Paris before, but I can't remember much of the city. So for this time, I decided to do all of the important sightseeing spots and the cliche things that you need to do in Paris. For that, the very first thing that I had to see was the Eiffel Tower. I just came out of the metro station and look what's here. Look, look. <laughs> We will get a better view today. I don't intend on climbing the Eiffel Tower, but I intend on walking around it and getting good photos of it. Because many sites in Europe have actually a high entrance fee, this is a very nice way of seeing them anyway from outside, not paying an entrance fee and to have still some very nice memories of your trip. So I've come to the first good spot from which you can see the Eiffel Tower. There are several in Paris. From here we'll just walk down there and see from which angle we can see it a bit. <laughs> it's like in the winter, it's super early, it's super cold and there's a whole bunch of people taking photos of the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower is one of the most iconic landmarks, not only in France, but globally. It was designed by Gustav Eiffel for the 889 World Fair. This is definitely a good spot, but the sun goes up on the other side. So actually, to get a really good photo, you would need to be on the other side of the Eiffel Tower right now. I am heading now to a different street from which you can see the Eiffel Tower and I'm currently at its feet. By the way, fun fact, the Tokyo Tower was inspired by the Eiffel Tower. Its function was supposed to be different, however it was inspired by it, like the design obviously. It is so cold that I decided to take a short coffee break here in this cafe. Coffee is quite expensive here, but my fingers are like, I can barely move them pretty cold. It should get warmer though in the course of the day. So another street from which you can see the Eiffel Tower pretty well is this one here. I'm happy that I looked up this time a couple of places from which I can take some better photos of the Eiffel Tower. I wish I had done the same for Sagrada Familia. In order to get to Champs-Élysées, you have to cross the Seine. In the summer or when the weather is a little bit better, I would highly recommend you to take a walk along the Seine. Taking a stroll along Champs-Élysées and the Seine are both totally free. Girls and boys, I'm now on Champs Elysees, and this is basically the Montmartre Sandu of Paris. <laughs> if it tells you anything, it's like Montmartre Sandu in Tokyo. If you're following me since Japan, it's just like a street with all these high-brand fashion stores. The Champs Elysees is one of the most famous avenues in the world. It is known for its high-end shopping and luxury fashion brands. On its eastern end you can find Place de la Concorde and on its western end there is Arc de Triomphe. This is incredibly stupid but I came to McDonald's. <laughs> I paid five, nearly six euro for this other coffee that I got. McDonald's is just so much cheaper. I got a regular coffee and I got a pas au chocolat. <laughs> this is super fresh. This is still warm. 
McDonald's in Paris really hits different. I have to say my first impression of Paris is after being to so many other cities that it has a certain charm to it. Like people say it's overrated, but in this video you just saw my first day in Paris. If you have very high expectations coming to Paris, you might experience something like the Paris syndrome. But I think that with the right weather and the right expectations, coming to Paris should in general be a nice experience for everyone. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I see you then in the next one.